How do we manage the protein transition? Which food components can provably boost your immune system? What's the best way to validate health claims for food and food components? Listen to our food and health experts discuss the biggest questions facing the food, nutraceutical, and food ingredient industries today. Welcome to Niso Talks Food and Health. Producing proteins from single cell microorganisms is an exciting and fast growing area in the food industry. Renske Janssen, project manager of protein technology at NISO, explains companies that have developed a microbial protein have a long and complicated journey to turn it into a usable, marketable and profitable food ingredient. Producing proteins from single cell microorganisms is a very exciting and new area in the food industry. Today I'll be talking to Renske Janssen, she's project manager of protein technology at NISO, and we will discuss the uh, complicated uh, journey towards uh, getting these proteins into usable and profitable ingredients in the food industry. Welcome, uh, Renske. Thank you, René. So, Renske, where do single-cell microbial proteins fit into the non-animal protein landscape? Yeah, what you see nowadays is that there's a lot of new protein ingredients in the market, and many of them are from the conventional sources like the soy, uh, pea, uh, also the nuts, uh, oats, uh, etc. Uh, mm -hmm. But you also have a new uh, new innovations uh, and that is the the cellular proteins uh, and this you can divide in two different um, sections actually you have the precision fermentation where you specifically produce animal proteins but without animals so by microorganisms producing a specific type of proteins mm -hmm. but you can also look at uh, biomass uh, producing biomass which is high in protein Okay, and if you uh, talk that, eh, what are the challenges involved in developing a fermented protein-rich biomass and then turning it into a usable food ingredient? Yeah, how you often start is you, you can have uh, a microorganism which can produce a specific type of protein or many type of proteins, but you also want to get those proteins out. Mm -hmm. So uh, getting those proteins out by extraction uh, is a complicated process uh, and this uh, is important to uh, take into account. Mm -hmm. uh, also an important factor is uh, the upscaling of your biomass production and that is also uh, a lot of factors are uh, playing a role in that. So uh, what are the challenges involved in uh, developing a fermented protein-rich uh, biomass and then turning that into a food ingredient? Often you start with, uh, with a microorganism which can uh, produce a specific proteins or many proteins, uh, but you also need to upscale this fermentation. So you mm -hmm. need to produce large amount of those microorganisms to, uh, to get enough uh, material. The other factor which is important is also uh, extraction of those proteins. So if you want to have the protein, uh, you need to purify them and that is also important to uh, develop this process and also do the upscaling of this process. And if you have these proteins then, so what, how can you determine what type of food products uh, are, let's say, relevant for a fermented non-animal protein? So there you need to look at the uh, specific characteristics of the proteins. If you have a protein, uh, you can determine uh, technical functional properties of the proteins. And this is, for example, if you're looking at how, s how well soluble is your proteins, but also can you form a gel, can you form an emulsion? And this determines what type of um, yeah, a final application you can use this, product in, uh, this uh, protein in. Yeah. Uh, if you look at sample for uh, to solubility, then you can think of uh, if it's very well soluble, uh, you can maybe can use it in a beverage. If it's uh, gelating very well, you can use it in a meat uh, alternative. Or um, if it uh, forms a good emulsion, then an example is that you can make a mayonnaise of it. And based on actually the specific uh, characteristics of this protein, mm -hmm. you can also have a look on what would be a good final application for this protein. And this might differ between the different type of proteins. So once you have that, that, that protein and, 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 and that sort of uh, insight, uh, can you increase the usability or the value of a protein? Yeah, there actually you need to look at the whole chain. So starting from uh, producing this, uh, this protein, uh, you can optimize those type of processes, but also um, the purification is a very important part. You, you can just take the whole, uh, the whole cells, uh, just 
dry them and use them as whole, but you can also purify them. And the type of purification and, uh, will also depend your uh, end characteristics of your protein. And sometimes it's not even necessary to completely purify the protein. Mm -hmm. uh, if there's still some other components present, this might be not a problem, depending on your type of application. Uh, but this is import uh, an important factor to consider and also, uh, of course, cost play a role. So if you purify uh, to a complete pure protein, this is often a more expensive process. So depending on your type of application, you need to, uh, to consider uh, all different factors over the whole uh, chain. And if you then look at that, eh? so what is then needed to bring the protein uh, to the food manufacturers and to, to demonstrate its value? So then it's important also to convince uh, potential customers of your protein to see uh, what is the uniqueness of your protein. Mm -hmm. So where is your protein better than other proteins? And this you can do uh, by, for example, benchmarking towards other proteins. So if you compare your protein to other type of proteins, see where uh, do you actually have a benefit. And uh, by showcasing this benefit and using this into a final application, this can help to, uh, to sell your uh, type of protein. You talk benchmarking, have you, so how, how do you do that benchmarking? So with benchmarking, you can, uh, for example, look at specific characteristics of your protein. Uh, an example is solubility. So how well is your protein soluble compared to the other type of proteins? So is it better soluble at a specific uh, acidity? So if it is still well soluble at an acidic pH or at a more neutral pH, those type of things, those type of differences between the different proteins can, uh, can help to look for the final application and also to your uniqueness of your protein. And if, if you look at this all, what overall advice would you give a company that wants to turn its microbial protein into a food ingredient? So there are two things which are important to focus on, uh, on the whole process, mm -hmm. to make sure you have the optimal process and also to determine based on what type of, what is the characteristics of your protein uh, for the final application. So basically what you're saying, a holistic and multidisciplinary approach is very important to, uh, to start with. Yes, indeed. Well, Renske, thank you very much for this nice insight uh, with this new uh, area, which is very exciting. This was Nisa Talks Food and Health. And if you want to know more, please check out our website. Thanks for your attention. If you enjoyed it, please check out our other episodes via our website and other platforms like Spotify, Apple iTunes, and YouTube. Subscribe through your regular podcast app to make sure you never miss an episode.